talk a little bit about uh, first order logic or not uh, logic and uh, knowledge graphs. So first order logic is kind of the most, the highest, it's, it's almost everything you would need to describe all the facts of the world. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a great language if you want something that's more expressive than propositional logic. So um, I'll show you some examples it's, um, of, of this first order logic. It's really uh, quite simple. So this is something that doesn't exist in propositional logic. It's something like a function. In this case, it's not really a function or a predicate. Uh, this is a, what's called a predicate, and this is what's called a, um, an attribute or a feature of this, of this object. So if you want to say, if you want to create some objects in this world that are blocks, you would use the, the predicate block or the, this uh, attribute block and, um, and assign it to that, that object. So it's, it's a little different than what you would think of in Python where you would just add that attribute uh, you know, as dotted syntax to say, like, is block equals true or something. But this, this will, this is an expression. Uh, all of, all of the first order logic expressions evaluate to either true or false. And so when you're making a statement like this, you're making a true statement. And so what this is saying is that if you ran this block attribute on, on A to test it, you would get true back. And if you ran that on B, you would also get true back. Um, and so and of course the and symbol is, works just like it does in, uh, in Python. And then, so, um, and then if you can also have these things called predicates or relationships between objects or verbs. And so the, the, the predicate on you could use to say, hey, that, that block B is on top of a table, uh, another object. Um, so I don't have that object defined here, but uh, you get the idea. Um, and so th this is just some of the, the statements with, uh, or um, forget the term for it, uh, expressions that you would need to, uh, to use to define the, this world, this, the entire world of the logic of this blocks world. All of this is from uh, Norvig and Russell's book, uh, Artificial Intelligence, A Modern Approach. So uh, if you want the full introduction, you'll have to read uh, all 700 pages of that book. It's, um, it's, it's, very, it's very massive. But, uh, but, there, but if you want to dig into it like I have, um, it's a lot of fun. Because you, you get to learn how to create these worlds and then teach a machine to act in that world and do logical things. And so uh, this particular, uh, the reason why we set this up is so that you can have the machine figure out how to achieve some new state to, to, to um, you have some set of actions that it's allowed to do, such as moving one block to another block and some other rules that are again defined by these, these logical um, expressions. To, to say you have to, you can't put a block on top of another block that isn't clear. This is another example of an attribute where you wanna say that at the moment block B is clear. So when you, talk, when you do clear B, you'll get a true statement because it's clear at the moment. Um, but in the end, you want, the, you want to reach the state where C is on, on C comma table, on B comma C, on A comma B, and you want all of those to come true and you just want A to be clear. And that's it. And of course you want them to all stay blocks. You don't want to change them from one object to another, if, even if that's an option in, your, in the rules of your game that you've set up. Um, and so a, a more intuitive way for some people is to represent all of this as a knowledge graph. And so you would, you would do that by, um, by using the, the, all of the predicates become relationships and relationships become edges in the graph. And the, and the kind of relationship is the, is the predicate word itself. So um, it's, uh, and it's a directed graph because there's an order to these, these expressions. The, the B comes before table, so the B is on top of table. And so C is on top of A in this case, and A is on top of the table, and B is on the table, and so on. Um, the, uh, the, the name of the book is Artificial Intelligence, Intelligence, a modern approach. By Peter Norvig and somebody Russell. 
Um, so Russell is more of a natural language processing and logic person, and Peter Norvig is more uh, AI generalist. Um, I think, so Peter works for, um, for Google, and he, he developed their spell checker. By the way, their spell checker is a, is, a, is, a Python, is a set of Python code that Norvig wrote that's about one page long, only about, um, about 40 lines of code. Uh, really amazing piece of work. Anyway, so that's that sort of expressiveness of a declarative language like this, like first order logic, is is really awesome because it allows you to solve some really hard problems like that, uh, like the spell checker. Or these, it, not all problems are, are obviously toy problems, and it goes through a lot of really practical real world problems. This ex, this same approach is used, for instance, to verify the nuclear test ban treaty that we've agreed to with the Russians and everybody else around the world. Um, because it's written in logic, everybody can look at that logic like a contract and they all understand the rules of the game. If you ever violate that logic, uh, then the machine, the algorithm that's running in the background, looking at all the sensor data coming from all the seismic monitors around the world, it will flag that as a violation and you'll be called out by the treaty and then you're in non-compliance and nobody can argue with it. That's one of the beauties of logic as a programming language. Um, it's, a, it's what's called a provable, provably correct uh, language. Um, you can actually do theorem proving with this sort of stuff. So that's what I love about it. I'm looking forward to incorporating it into a chat bot. Um, but I'll sh show you what the code looks like when you actually do it in Python. So this is the code that goes along with Peter Norvig's book. It's called a, uh, AIMA-Python on, um, under the AIMA code project on GitHub. So I'll, I'll post that link after I'm done. And so inside of that package is um, this AMA uh, Python folder, obviously. And, and then you've got the, um, the tests, but I'm, he, he has, it's a very flat structure. So everything's at the top level. So you don't have to do that dot dot import that, uh, that Muhammad showed us how to do. Everything's right here. And so this is that problem that we just looked at, defined all of the, the rules and all of the um, conditions, initial conditions of that situation. So like I had, it looks like I didn't have all of the correct conditions set up. Um, uh, it looks like the things like what, what's a block and what's not a block, that falls under something else. Um, uh, I'm surprised that, hasn't to, that isn't required in the initial conditions. Nonetheless, so this is how, how you define it, um, those statements like I showed in, the, in that slide. And then you define the goals, what you want to have happen. Um, apparently, he doesn't even care whether A is clear or not. So he just, he just wants to be, make sure that A is on top of B and uh, B is on top of C. He doesn't care that they're on top of a table even. So the, the goals are, are simplified versions of what I had. And then these are the only actions you can do. You can move a block from one location onto another. And that, uh, that what that hop, what that requires is that B needs to already be on top of X. And um, yep, and then it needs to be, and then the top of uh, B needs to be clear so you, you can pick it up. And then the, the, the top of Y needs to also be clear and so that you can have a place to put the block at lo uh, that is B to the, uh, to the location um, Y. For those, so X and Y are locations and B is the block. Uh, and um, we have a, a separate kind of, of, of action called move to table um, because the table is always clear. So you don't need to check it for clear. It's a different kind of object. Um, there's always a place on your table to put the blocks. So this would be like in a factory floor, we have an infinite floor space. Um, and these are the kinds of algorithms that uh, Amazon uses in their big uh, packing facility so that they can move boxes around to the right locations. So um, anyway, this is what it looks like. And then if you, if you dive a little deeper, you'll be able to see how that class uses those strings and processes them as logical expressions and then uh, creates the, uh, the problem statement that can then be uh, what's called inference can be done on that, on that uh, problem. And, um, and what you're looking for is if you can satisfy the conditions of the goal. And so that's called the satis satisfying problem or satis yeah. And 
and it's called a SAT algorithm. When you have an algorithm that can search through a lot of different options and find a solution that satisfies the conditions of the goal. And so that's an area of active research. Um, these small problems, you can search all the possible poss moves and it's not a big deal. But uh, when, when it gets harder and harder, like, like if you're playing chess or you're playing Go, then this becomes almost impossible. And you have to be very clever about how you search that space. So you're searching a graph like this that has you know, millions of possibilities of connections and you're trying to move from one graph to another graph by moving blocks around. So that's how knowledge and graphs work. Uh, one last thing, um, you know, I can't conclude a presentation without talking about Carrie and the, and the chat bot. So we have some awards this month for, I promise some, um, some Duchess themed awards for people who contribute to the repository. I'll post the link to that as well. Um, so the court jester award um, goes to someone who commits their first or provides their first merge request or pull request to our repository. And that goes to Alex Rosengarten up in, uh, in NorCal. He, um, he used to live here in San Diego, but he decided to, to transport his, his wisdom down here for briefly to help us generate some documentation. So he submitted a pull request to our, um, our GitLab repo. So he'll get a, a, a free t-shirt if he's ever down here or if he, he'll, he sends me his mailing address. Um, the Joan of Arc Award for the purest code commit. Uh, that's, uh, that's a code commit that has high coverage tests and uh, low flakiness. Uh, Alessia had her first ever code commit to not have a lot of flakiness and a lot um, and, and have high coverage. So she, she learned how to write doc tests and she learned how to use my automatic linting tools and Sublime. So, so she was able to su submit a really awesome big uh, pull request that had no errors at all, uh, no, no linting style errors. And so it, um, that was awesome. So she gets a, uh, a, a subscription, a lifetime subscription to, um, oh no, sorry, she gets an ebook. And then the Knighthood Award, it's still up for grabs. There's a few days left in the month. So if anybody wants to try to, to grab that one, you can get a free book, print book, a free t-shirt, and a lifetime subscription to whatever query ultimately becomes in terms of a service. And, um, and um, oh, actually, uh, looks like uh, this, yeah, Muhammad's in the running there, but he hasn't actually committed a, at a pull request to the repository that whole that whole application he built that's a, that would satisfy me if um, if he could just make the pull request uh, compliant with uh, the, the needs we have he's he that code that he has is on his local machine and he hasn't updated what he's submitted to the to the repository so um, you still have a chance to beat him though if uh, if he doesn't submit that pull request before the end of the month um, let's see. Uh, so for, the, for June, we'll, we'll again do the, the Court Jester Award. I've still got a couple more t-shirts and uh, the Magician Award is gonna go to someone and I forgot what this was for. Oh, this is for an independent app, an app that imports query, but does not require a pull request to query. So any app that somebody can do from outside of query, like a Django app or another command line app or whatever you would like, um, as long as it's a significant app that does something, an MVP of, that does something that uses query outside of query, you can, you can win the Magician Award. And like I said, I've got some t-shirts for that. And I've got, well, since we have, uh, we don't have a service yet, I can also offer lifetime subscriptions to the, uh, to the, to the, to the to query. So you, your app will have lifetime access to, the, uh, to query and all the updates and and any APIs we set up for the, for your app on the repo. Thank you. Thank you, Hobson. Uh, any any questions before we move to our last speaker? Yeah, I have a question, Hobson. Sure. So this knowledge on a graph on like ordering is there is an algorithms I have to download like as a package I have to install or it's, um, there are algorithms that you, and packages you can install, these satisfaction, satisfying algorithms that, that can check a logical statement, but they all have different syntax in terms of these strings that you define the logic in. Um, so what I've done is I've just uh, actually used the, the raw Python uh, form of those algorithms so that 
that nor because they're so well documented in this textbook. This is the this is the textbook for ever, that everyone uh, uses to uh, to understand this um, in in college. So uh, if you uh, I prefer I like going straight to the source. And so there's a package um, AMA Python that I'm using to uh, to do that. It's also available in Scala and and on Java, I think, and maybe a couple other languages. So no matter what language you're using, you can use these algorithms. And, and you can even go in and tweak them and come up with your own ideas to fix them. Thank you. No worries. Opsan, we have a question in the chat. Um, do you think that this kind of approach is the future of NLP? Well, Russell certainly does. Um, uh, he's, I, I posted a video, I think, on the Python user group, I, or maybe it was on San Diego Machine Learning, but I'll post it over here. And he shows at the, at the end of that how you can use these, what's called Bayesian logic, where you add a little probability in these connections between in the graph so that you have some likelihood and you allow there to be a, an unlimited number of objects in the universe, in this case, words. Um, you can actually build the logical statements around the grammar and then allow the machine to exercise that grammar and compose sentences and, and, and interact in the world in a very logical way. Um, I don't know, that, I haven't figured out how to make that work, but, uh, but Russell has, and he's formed a company, a startup to do that. So he's the one who put together the, um, the algorithm for the, the, uh, the SALT treaty and the, and the um, a nuclear test ban treaty. He's got, um, he's got so, supposedly some natural language processing algorithms out there in the world. So it, it probably is. Um, I just can't figure out how to use it yet. Speaking of NLP, somebody in the uh, chat asked the question because they can't ask via a microphone. Uh-huh. Uh, H-U-S-N asked, uh, sorry, I'm at work, so I asked a question by typing. Uh, do you think this kind of approach is the future of NLP? Uh, yeah, that's the one I was trying to answer. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I do think it is. Okay. Uh, there, uh, they, in this book, they, they, they go through all the other approaches to NLP, including uh, deep learning. So um, all the statistical or what's called connectionist views of what and how intelligence works. Um, but that's, um, and so apparently, I haven't gotten to the end of the book, but apparently they, they show how, so which, what are the advantages and disadvantages of each approach. So we're at, at Tangible AI and, um, and for a query that, that, that open source uh, chat bot, we're going to do a hybrid of, of both. As you can see in Muhammad's presentation, we're able to incorporate many different personalities and have them all work together. And so we'll have some sort of a logic bot at some point that can, so you can test it yourself and see which, which of the bots are better. Well, very cool. Thank you very much. My pleasure.